U.S. and its allies have launched more than a dozen new airstrikes against Islamic State targets in Iraq and Syria. That's according to Pentagon officials. They say the bombings took place over the past two days, and the targets included militant positions near the Syrian cities of Kobani and Aleppo. The U.S. has been dropping bombs on Syria for more than two months now. And the New York Times reports people there are beginning to view America as an ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. U.S. officials have called for him to step down for murdering his own people, but the rise of ISIS has given the two sides a common enemy. Activists say Syrian government airstrikes on Tuesday killed nearly 100 people in Raqqa, the Islamic State's self-declared capital. And they say more than half of the victims were civilians. That was just two days after Pentagon officials said coalition bombings hit militants near that same city. Christian Whiten is a former State Department senior advisor. So Christian, if the enemy of my enemy is my friend, all of a sudden we're pretty good friends, or so it would appear, with Bashar al-Assad. Well, that's the unfortunate conclusion being drawn by too many people around the world. And this has been exacerbated by an administration here in Washington that cannot say who it wants to win. Uh, the president has said clearly who we want to lose in uh, Syria and Iraq. We want ISIS to lose, but we're creating a vacuum. Uh, we ought to be in favor, of course, of filling that vacuum with secularists, people who do not want to unify mosque and state, uh, people who are not like ISIS, but just a little bit better, which I would characterize Assad as. But, uh, you know, so far we are creating breathing space for Assad, which is a problem because he's not just um, murdering his own people, 200,000 who have died in this civil war since it started four years ago. He has a lot of American blood on his hands, too. Well, four years ago when that civil war was, was underway, President Obama said Bashar al-Assad has to go. That's right. And of course, then he famously didn't follow up with that. You know, he was able to blame it on on Congress. Of course, over in the UK, the British uh, prime minister asked for permission and was voted down in 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 attacking Syria after they used chemical weapons. Uh, but, you know, overall, uh, this is a problem. We, the U.S. has given very minor support to the free Syrian army, to the secular defectors from Assad's uh, army and secular opponents of not only Assad, but against the terrorists. But it's been extremely limited. Limited. It's been very slow. We're now four years into this war. So, you know, we really don't have our head in the game of, of describing what kind of Middle East we want, what will be friendliest to the United States, and how to get there. Yeah, there was a line in that New York Times piece that said much that same thing. It caught my eye. I want to read it to you. It says, inside and outside Syria, a growing refrain from Mr. Assad's supporters and opponents alike is that American po uh, policy makes little sense, that by trying to avoid taking sides, the United States is neither having its cake nor eating it. You agree? I do. And of course, it's not just the president who's at fault. You're seeing um, across the board in Washington, you have liberals like Senator Tim Kaine of uh, Virginia, but also Rand Paul, the isolationist. He styles himself as a non-interventionist, saying that what we really need is a congressional debate and congressional authorization. So, OK, we have congressional hearings. You have a lot of preening on Capitol Hill. Inevitably, they vote to authorize the war. And yet we're no closer to a strategy and no closer of description who we want to run the Middle East it or is, this part of the Middle East. It is said that ISIS has expanded about as far as it can in Iraq without running into towns where the population naturally will not allow it to thrive, but that it has room to grow in Syria. Uh, do you see it that same way? I think so, and I wouldn't rule out further advances in Iraq. The uh, most fruitful ground for it has been uh, Sunni parts of Iraq in Syria. Of course, Sunnis feel very um, abused by the Shiite-dominated government in Baghdad. Uh, that's why you're not seeing anything like the uh, Sunni awakening, the awakening uh, against um, al-Qaeda that we saw after the surge of U.S. forces in 2007. You know, this is a resilient force. It's well-led, unfortunately. It has decent resources. Why water resources, oil resources. Uh, it seemed two months ago people were talking about this as a 50,000 man army and now you're hearing estimates of 100,000 men and of course you have our chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dempsey, talking about a four-year war against this. I mean that's longer than World War II for the United States. So yes, I think there is room to grow unfortunately. What a mess. Christian Whiten. Christian, thank you.